defensive MVP Cam Alexander, head coach trailer. Uh, we do have the coffee for you there, just in case you can get it out. <laughs> I don't really want to sit down on this right now, but I guess I will do it. We will let you kick it off with the ah. <laughs> We'll let you kick it off with an opening statement, then open it up to questions for our student athletes, followed by questions for Coach Trailer. Congratulations on winning the 2023 Studer's Coffee Frisco Bowl. Yeah, thanks to the Frisco Bowl. I mean, Sean and Kristen and all you guys did a fantastic job taking care of us. Uh, we did a much better job coming back the second time around. Uh, but y'all were great both times, so thank you there. Uh, got off to a rough start, you know, uh, through the two interceptions early. Our defense just kept us in it. And uh, we finally got going a little bit. I thought the play to Taiki was a huge play to get us started. It was an unbelievable throw and catch. And then, you know, coming back to Josh and him getting the long one in there, doesn't surprise me. Those two seniors have been doing that all year. Obviously, the interception by Cam was big, but our defense just kept doing it all night. And as all year, our, our special team was fantastic. So it was, a, it was a, the epitome of our team, kind of. We haven't been just beautiful all year. We've just been kind of a gritty, triangle of toughness kind of team. And uh, we got it done tonight. Really grateful for all those 18 seniors. And, and all the way back to the very beginning with Larry Coker and the original 18. And, uh, and for those guys to get to see us win our first bowl was, was huge. All right. Carson has the microphone. You just raise your hand. We'll get it over to you. I saw Alex over here in the front. From the reminder, just direct them to the student athletes oh, first nice. so they can get going. Identify yourself, please, and we'll kick this off. Alex Blink, FI360. Uh, Josh, after the first quarter, well, first quarter, you guys, Offensively, there were some struggles, but what changed for you guys as an offense uh, after the first? Uh, really, we, we just stay locked in. Um, of course, it's, it's going to be a little adversity. We just stay locked in, focus on the, the small details. And, uh, and as you focus on a small thing, he always says, uh, the big thing is take care of themselves. So uh, we, we just stay focused on the details and uh, we started to progress. And to contribute to that, Marshall did a great job. They've been a big middle open cover four team the yeah. entire year, and they came out, closed the middle on us, cover one, cover three. It took us a while to kind of settle into that, and once we got a little bit of beat on that, that helped us out too. So nice job to Marshall. Right here in the middle, on the right. Steve Whitaker, birdsup.com. Josh, you were, I mean, Frank was your quarterback all year, and then he's out, and so Owen steps in. What were your thoughts on how Owen did tonight? And what did, did you and Frank say anything to each other before the game, or what was that like? Uh, no, we we just we always know like like next man up. Mm -hmm. um, it's always expected for for the next man to be uh, just as ready as if he was the starter. Um, when we started today, uh, he did a great job. Stay positive uh, through all the adversity that we faced. Uh, great guy on and off the field. Uh, I, I believe in him so much. Um, uh, that's my dog. Yeah. In the back over here. To your left in the corner. Uh, Matt Roy, News 4 San Antonio, Fox 29. Uh, Coach, last week when we chatted, you said today was going to be the day that, you know, all the emotions hit you. Now the game's over, you're dripping wet with coffee. What are the emotions that you're feeling? Yeah, it was the stretch line that got me. You know, I was very intentional with each one of those 18, and uh, I wanted to make sure they heard me one more time. And uh, once I got to the stretch line, it was a ball game and I was ready to go. And I want to give a lot of credit to our team. Uh, we knew Frank wasn't going to play uh, for the last three and a half weeks, and uh, our team didn't tell a soul, and it was the best kept secret ever in the history of San Antonio, I would imagine. Any other questions for our student athletes? <coughs> Back over here to the right, please. Somebody's got to ask Cam why he didn't score. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Luca with the San Antonio Express News. Cam, I was not going to put you on the spot like that, but I will ask you, what was the key to the defense uh, keeping Marshall off the board in the second half? What went well for you guys? Uh, I would just say it was us being mentally focused. Uh, I would say we had to you know, stay on our toes because it's, at the end of the day, they're still a good team. Um, really just listening to the coaches and doing your job is really what got us a, a, a winner today. We'll go back. Right. Carson right over here again. Josh, your class talked a lot about wanting to get that first bowl win. How does it feel to sit here knowing that you've accomplished that? Man, it, it feels great. Uh, <laughs> it feels great. It's another box check. Uh, when, whenever our class came in, the 2019 class, uh, we said we wanted to change uh, how people looked at UTSA. Uh, so the first thing was getting a ring. 
uh, we got two of those. And then the next thing was winning a bowl game, you know, so uh, it, it feels great to check that off the list. Back over here, right over here. Right over here in the back to Don, right there. Hey, Kim, you're one of those portal guys that comes to UTSA as a transfer this year, first year, your first team all-conference. Um, a lot of portal guys in, in there now. Why did you come to UTSA, and what would you say to those guys that are in the portal that are considered UTSA? In the hospitality, um, when I came here on a visit, coach just showed me so much love, and why not come here? <laughs> that was the question to myself, and I, I just made the decision. I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm staying in Texas, so this is the perfect spot for me. Back to your left. Oh, by Cam, why didn't you score? <laughs> <laughs> He's a great athlete, too, with great hands. I thought he was going to score. Right. I was saying that they rallied to the sideline faster than I thought they were. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Any other questions for our student athletes before we dismiss them? Two more in the front. Hey, Cam, the defense today, you were down your leading sack guy, but you, your defense still got plenty of pressure in the backfield, and also a lot of DBs went down, and you still uh, held them out of the end zone in the second half. How was tonight kind of a testament of the depth that this defense has? I would say everybody just, like if you said, the next man up, being ready to do your job, and doing your one eleven. living. I'd like to add to that. Like we, we play three deep all year long. Our kids, they're not selfish at all. They know they're sharing reps, uh, but we're really deep, and it's the only way we survived tonight. And I appreciate you noticing we were we were running out of people uh, quickly, and uh, they just kept somebody else just kept coming in there. So great job, Josh. What are you gonna miss about being a road runner? Oh man, everything. Honestly, uh, my teammates, of course, uh, the coaching staff. Man, I I feel like we we have the best coaching staff in the nation. Uh, it's nobody. It's nobody that cares about the players as much as Coach Taylor, um, as as much as our possession coaches, uh, Coach Lepp, G Buck, um, Coach Price. You know what I'm saying? All the position coaches. Um, they they show the most love that that I've seen in in college football. You know, uh, a lot of people see it as a business. I feel like the coaching staff here uh, is it, way more than a business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's it's a family as well, and and they care about your your well being outside of football. Uh, another saying that Coach Taylor has, man, I'm gonna miss his sayings too. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of them with me, but um, another saying that he has is uh, his purpose is is to see how many men he can make out, out of how many boys come to him. So uh, he's done a great job of, of making men out of the boys that, that come to UTSA. Uh, man, yeah, <laughs> I'll miss everything. I can, I can go on and on. We'll go back to the left. Coach, uh, speaking to Josh's performance today, obviously. He got me if you can notice. He got me. <laughs> I mean, there, there he was. I'm, I'm afraid this question might too. Uh, last year, obviously, Josh didn't get to play in your guys' bowl game for other reasons. Yep. Today, you see him perform like this, become the offensive MVP, and will your team do and help your team to a victory. What, is, what does that say about this young man next to you? It's, it's who he is. There's never a doubt. And, and when you. When you're in my chair, you got to make a lot of decisions, and, and, and I'm smart enough to know when you make certain decisions, you're going to catch a lot of heat for making them. Uh, but I'll stand on Josh Cephas every single day of my life. Uh, the kid made a mistake. He's owned it. Uh, he's made everything right from it. He'll learn from his mistake. But the kid never takes a rep off. He never misses practice. He makes great grades. He's a wonderful human being. He's gritty. He's tough. And, you know, he made a mistake. And uh, I can promise you everybody in this room has made a mistake. Your mistake wasn't in public. You probably got lucky and stayed in private. But we've all made them. And his just got to be in public. And uh, I, anybody that walks out of here saying they hadn't, you know, they're probably not telling the truth to their own selves. And their day's probably coming. If there are no more questions for our student athletes, we'll say thank you. Let you go celebrate with your teammates a little bit more. Coach Trailer will remain here and answer any questions you may have. We have Jeff. For Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys Thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Yeah. Love you too. We want you to go celebrate. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, so Thank you. Thank you. Back here in the middle. Now all for you. JJ Perez, Inside Runner Sports. Jeff, why didn't uh, Frank give it a go today? He tried. I mean, uh, he just he wasn't getting any better. And, uh, you know, the x ray showed something and he still wasn't getting better so we wanted to get it looked at again and the MRI showed something else and 
that made sense. And, uh, you know, it was just too much of a risk and there was too much pain and he just couldn't practice. And he tried and he tried and he tried. And the way he had it in his mind, he was gonna ride off in the sunset. Anybody that has the audacity to even think that kid would have opted out or not played, it's just amazing that you've ever even watched the Roadrunners play one time in your life. So shame on the few that had those thoughts that killed him. He called me today. He's like, Coach, can we go ahead and put the statement out? I'm like, I really don't want Marshall to know, Frank. Just hang in there. You know, ignore the ignore the noise, man. Those people, you know, it's just it's a shame. But those kids see all that stuff, and it, and it bothers them because they're good people. And I hate that anybody would ever even think that. That's not the case. He could not play. He wanted to play more than life itself. He was on the sideline. He prepared Owen all week. He was very good role model for Owen. There's nothing more he could have done than he did. And he's as much the reason we won as anybody. That that grit of that team, that character being found 14 to nothing. I bet if all the Roadrunner fans were honest, a bunch of them would be probably ready to give up when it was 14 to nothing. Those kids just won't ever go away. Uh, we've all seen them do it for a long time now. That's because Frank Harris has come back. Well, what does it say about Owen to have that rough first quarter and really be able to rally that second quarter? It seemed like it was the turning point in this game. Yeah, ESPN asked me before the game, what did I know about Owen? And I literally said that. The kid's gritty. He's tough. How about the hits he took early? Gosh almighty. And he doesn't wave it above 80. I mean, I, I was just knew he was out. And uh, we were fixing to put Eddie out there and ready to go. And he just kept getting up. And maybe, maybe those hits are what? Knocked some of them silly decisions he was making out of him. And uh, once he got right, I mean, he, and he's a way better athlete than people think he is. His escape ability in the pocket was big tonight, and the plays he made on the run were big. And uh, he's a tough kid. He's a tough kid. Coach, your defense held Marshall after three quarters, one for 11 on third down. What was it about this defense that just bared down on third downs? Yeah, um, they believe in our, in our culture, our pillars. They really do. And uh, Jess Lepp does a really good job, and all those coaches do. And Nick Graham, you know, Brad Sherrod, Sadiq Haynes, those guys are good. You know, our analysts off the field, you know, Zach Brown, Jamal Ashley, those, they're really good coaches. The scout teams have been great. And our kids just believe. If you look back at it, you know, we were disappointed. You know, we gave up the long run, we missed a tackle, and, and then we had the one throw that, you know, got over us. And then you look up and it's 17 points. It's just three plays. So you're trying to tell everybody at halftime, just calm down. It's been three plays. And then you come out the you know, second half, right before the end of the third, going to the fourth, we miss a tackle. And then they go 60. And now you're like, well, it's only four plays. Well, heck, now we're about to get point 24, but we stopped them on that. And that was a big, big turning point in the game, I thought, uh, to get them stopped in that field goal. Coach, is this the most coffee you thought you've ever had in your life for one night? You know, I, I've been lucky in my life because I've won a lot of big games, but my kids have always taken care of me and they've never really gotten me before. But because of the bowl, I agreed that I would take one for the team, but I've, I've got to talk to the Frisco Bowl. we got to look at maybe some warm, if the temperature is in the 40s, maybe some warm coffee. Uh, I got pneumonia tomorrow. I'm gonna be upset if signing day. I'm in the hospital, so I wish I could have seen Dr. Combo's face when I said crack while ago in the fields. <laughs> it looked like when she interviewed me four years ago, it was the same face of just terror. Like, what am I getting myself into hiring this man? Coach Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas Football. You coached Owen's uh, father and his uncles at Jacksonville High School. In what ways does Owen remind you maybe of them? Here we go. Now we're going to talk about how old I am as well. Uh, <laughs> yes, that is correct. Actually, Devin McEwen's parents as well and Chris Carpenter. So, uh, you know, the McCallans, they're, they're, they're raised in the country. Uh, they were raised on a farm. Uh, you know, their father, Pat, and those people were raised tough. And they're just tough people. They're, they're, they're honorable people. They're good people. And that's who they are in the core of their fiber. And uh, that's who he was tonight. It does not surprise me. That's just, you meet a McCowan, that's what you're getting. Coach, what does it do for the team going forward to know that y'all were able to get the bowl in tonight without cornerstones like Frank and Rashad? Well, it's a sad day because I'm going to miss those kids, but there's a part of them that will never, ever be gone. 
we're just different now. You know, we're just different. We're built different. We're built to last. And it's because of those 18 seniors, obviously, you mentioned Frank and Rashad, so that's how I answer the question. But there's so many of them, you know, T. Haynes at left guard, Ernesto at right tackle, B. Matt, you know, T. Bell, Rashad Wisdom, this Lucas Dean, how about that punter we're going to miss for the last four years? But their core is still here. If we can keep this team together, and the game of football has changed so much, like Cam, we got him for not a dime, like nothing. He's first team all conference. I mean, our collectives are going to have to do something, right? And we need people to contribute. And I know y'all are tired of hearing it, but they're not going to stay because they love Coach Trailer much more. That we got to help them a little bit. And none of our kids ask for a lot. They really don't ask for a lot. They'd like to have a car and maybe some insurance and a cell phone. If we can do that, we'll win a lot of football games in UTSA for a long time. If we don't. I mean, JJ will be writing bad articles about what a bad recruiter I am uh, and all these guys getting in the portal. Uh, and it's going to be sad for me because I don't get to have any more of that coffee running down my crack anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Over here to the left, please. Coach, uh, Jacob Richmond, Lone Star Live. Uh, can you talk a little about during this week of prep what you're seeing from Owen and, and what gives you confidence to put him on this big stage and then see him deliver? You know, um, He's a pro, but so is Eddie. I mean, Eddie is too. I mean, when Eddie was the two and Owen was the three, and they both supported each other. And then when they flipped it, we flipped it around. They've both been that way. They're pros, and um, it's just our culture. It's who our it's who every kid is in that locker room. I know that stuff sounds corny, but it, it's hard. And I told you when y'all hired me, it's hard to get the rocket off the ground. That's the hardest part. The first three or four years, but once you get the rocket up and it gets flowing, it's a lot easier. It's like a snowball going downhill. It just picks up momentum, and we've got to keep this momentum going as, as, a, as a university, an IL. There's so many things we got going right now. And uh, But to your point, he's a pro. I know he's a redshirt freshman, but he just knows how to prepare, as do all of our kids, though, honestly. Right here in the middle of the back. JJ Perez in general sports. Jeff, what happened to Rashad Wisdom? Um, he... Uh, broke his left arm, and uh, somehow that'll be in the movie as well. You know, Frank breaks his right one, and Rashad breaks his left one, and they're not out there on the final snout. But I know, if you know those kids, their two smiles were as big as anybody out there, and all they care about is we finally got that bowl win. And, and when we make the movie, none of those things are factual ever, right? So we can put Frank out there as the quarterback by then, Don. We can have Rashad making the interception instead of Cam. We watch Friday Night Lights. A lot of that stuff is not accurate, but we all believe it. So come on, Jeff. What does it What does it mean to you? Mentioned the game ends with neither of those guys on the field. They've been your guys the last four years here. Did do they leave something behind? There's no doubt, and we talked about that all week. Those guys will never leave because there's a piece of their fiber out there. What they've taught all those young kids. Uh, we'll we'll be here many more times together. Because of the fiber those kids left behind, the triangle of toughness, and they really believe in that. Jeff, Owen's best throw might have been the touchdown that was called back from an eligible uh, man downfield. And then the very next play, your whole offense seemed to be angered by that and determined to get right back in the end zone on the next play. Um, the will of Owen leading that offense, that team, and also I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that call. Yeah, uh, you know, I agree. Uh, we're a stubborn group. We're just stubborn. We just don't go away. And uh, I'm sure my mother is probably hearing this right now. And she's saying right now, I know where that comes from. But my mom was just stubborn as hell, and I am too. And my kids just, you know, I know I look like I'm calm as heck over there most of the time, but my insides are burning. But I want my kids to always stay calm. And uh, I could tell that call there really got them aroused, to be honest with you. It was a very late call, uh, but they swear they got it right. So I'll trust them because I sure don't want to get fined and give my bowl bonus away just by talking about some officials. Coach, uh, Kirk, back here on your left. Correct me if I'm wrong. To me, it felt like the turning point in the game was the 41-yarder to tight key. Uh, from Owen after the first five drives went punt, interception, punt, interception, punt. And this, it was third and 14, and he laces one to Tyke. 
uh, to get it down to the three-yard line, and then Robert Henry punches it out, in from there. Do you think that was the turning point for your offense, was that 41-yard game? Yeah, I think it got us some confidence. There's no doubt. But I also think later on in the game, we got a third, you know, like 12 or 13, and Josh broke a couple of tackles. There's a, there a bunch of plays in the game. I think that's what got us going, though. But, you know, you know, it's the great thing about not having to call every play. You just call some of them. When you're the head coach, you can be a smart aleck all the time. But I tell them all the time, you can't score if you don't try. Hell, we ain't throwing the ball down the field, though. I mean, let's throw it down there and see what happens. What do you know? Throw one down there until I keep making the play of the game. And all of a sudden, we're smart coaches. No, we should have been doing it earlier. One more question in the front here. And then that looks like it's a wrap after this one. You know, Steve Hellwick, SB Nation, you were sitting here two years ago talking about how it's pretty common for most uh, seasons to end in a loss. So for a season to end with a win and the celebration on the field here, what was different about tonight and embracing that moment? You know, I hate it because, you know, when that monkey gets on you like that and you've never done it and you have to hear it all the time, it does become psychological. And I felt like it was psychological or not. It, 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 it just like, the harder we tried, the more we couldn't get out of our own way. Uh, whether it was roughing the passer on a touchdown getting called back, whether it was lineman downfield, touchdown call back, whether the game's over, fourth down, oh, DPI. I mean, just, and you just feel it in your kids. And now that when you get it done, that's why I'm so grateful we won two back-to-back -back championships. Those things were so hard to do. There are many great coaches and many great programs. They'll never do that. It's hard. And so I'm just really glad that's something we don't have to hear about, you know, ever again. Because, But I know how, you know, Greg and JJ are. So we had never won two in a row. So that'll be the next thing, right? So we'll be chasing that down next year. All right. We look forward to watching you chase it. Congratulations again. Appreciate um, it very much. Thank you all. God bless. Victory. Birds up. Who would play Jeff in the movie? Jeff in the movie. That's a great question. Some country Balkan band. McConaughey. I wish. I'm not near as good looking as Matthew McConaughey.